looked earlier today, it was kind of clouding up like it was going to do something and cooled off, and now the sun's back out, so go figure. Iowa weather for us. What are we up to today? About six foot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What are we up to today? Now that's a loaded question. We're picking corn on the Vogel farm down here by Iowa City. Uh, this down here wasn't too bad. It got more rain here by a couple of good rains, a couple of good in two inch rains that we didn't get at Williamsburg. So it's, uh, of course this whole farm was run down, broken down, and, and this is only the third year for it, and we're starting to get some real, real production out of it. It's, uh, Oh, I suppose we, we'll say that it's running, uh, running all the way around 200 bushel and some places 250. We've had a little trouble today with the trucks keeping up as we're hauling it back to our grain storage at the factory back in Williamsburg. So we we're going about 25 miles back and forth. And so we just kept the combine waiting with uh, waiting on a truck. We've got two carts out here. Uh, there's a lot of excitement that we brought the 1121 back. Um, it, it had been gone for close to, I believe, about 10 years. And this one, of course, is, uh, you know, just very traditional style cart, very simple to operate. And, of course, the advantage of a dual logger is the lower profile, and it unloads uh, fast into the semi when you're trying to keep up. I feel it's one of the standby of the old uh, 1050 cart that we had that everybody really liked. In fact, the old 1050 will outsell about anything we built uh, up to that time. One of the real advantages, it has a high side on the far side so that when you're loading with the combine, you you, uh, you don't have to worry so much about it going over the far side of the wagon or you can't see it. Iowan farmer rode with us uh, down on our Iowa County, one of our farms down in Iowa County, actually the farm that I grew up on that my parents still live on. And uh, he rode with us for the day or the afternoon, I guess it was. And uh, we just had a great time spending the afternoon with him visiting and uh, getting to know him a little bit better. He's been to Kinsey for one of our experienced Kinsey events. And uh, he, he wanted to come out and join us while we were farming. He was just starting to get underway, so it didn't slow him back too much to miss part of a day in the field. Since we've kind of been working with Kinsey here for the past two years, doing a little stuff on social media, uh, you heard them say that they're farmers first or farmers as well. And to come up today and harvest a little bit of grain with John and the combine, ride around with Susie and Ryan, it's, it's definitely cool to see the personal aspect of a, a company like this. Uh, he's a lot like a lot of our, uh, our, our old uh, customers, you know, you, you sell through uh, satisfied customers and if he's a satisfied customer and wants to make videos of it, we, we're glad to be part of it. So you just got out of the combine with, with John. Yes. Uh, tell me your impression of John, what's he like, uh, what'd you guys talk about? Uh, very personable guy. Uh, Made some jokes, uh, talked about how the gr uh, growing year was this year. He's impressed with what's out there uh, for the amount of rain that we got and just a little bit about everything. And it's, uh, it was a very cool opportunity. So Susie, as the owner of Kinsey, what really kind of sets you apart when you get the chance to run these pieces of equipment in the field as a customer would? Yeah, well, I would say just, you know, since we're farmers, we operate the equipment and, you know, for me, uh, I spend a lot of time in the office, but when I do get out of the office and rub shoulders with farmers, I can talk intelligently about the equipment and about farming. And, um, you know, over the years, uh, as I've talked to different farmers, like say it's on a product issue, um, you know, I'm able to understand, you know, for the most part mechanically what, if there's an issue or concern and talk through that with them. We understand those challenges too, because it, we, we've all experienced it, even us as a as a manufacturer, you have equipment breakdown and it's frustrating when something breaks and you got to get it back up and running again. And having the skill to be able to operate a grain cart like this, your dad actually told me the story about uh, the tennis ball on a cone 
Uh, oh, yeah. so he told me that story. Uh, yeah. That was yeah back so, when I worked for Caterpillar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, he came out and you knocked the tennis ball right off. Yeah. Yeah. So it had, it had helped operate the construction <laughs> equipment before I went to work for Caterpillar, and that was right out of college. And I'd done that in high school. So, um, it, you know, that's just the fun part about growing up in, on a farm and in a family where we've got a lot of different equipment. You know, I got to operate a lot of things as a kid that most kids don't get to operate. And that's kind of one thing that you'll hear people kind of joke about is that before anybody should be an engineer or build things is they should be the operator for three years beforehand or work on something yeah. for three years beforehand because without that experience, you're going to build something that won't really work in the, mm -hmm. in the field. Yeah, and we see that difference too in the engineers we get that have had the farm background and that have operated farm equipment. You know, they have a, just a different level of understanding about the equipment and that's not that an engineer can't learn the product it's just a sharper learning curve for an engineer that hasn't been around this equipment than it is for one that's grown up on a farm and operated it and knows the you know the ins and outs of it and knows too how to think through making things more simple to operate having the opportunity to go visit other places visiting kinsey's unlike any other factory business that you can go to because it's a family-owned company so the experience of coming up here is completely different than going to other uh, manufacturers. We're not only harvesting, but we're also working on our barn project that we talked about when we were planting corn on this farm in the spring when we did the video. And the uh, foundation is all poured and we're starting to reconstruct the barn and, and you're going to get to see where we're at progress wise with that today and hear about uh, what it'll look like when it's all done. And you can see behind we're starting to reconstruct it so we've made it now a one-story barn. We've got the foundation poured. Um, of course what you see in the background there are the overhead doors uh, hydraulic doors that we'll have that can open on uh, either side there of the barn. Of course that wasn't part of the original barn, 1850s vintage, but we're going to put all the old original beams back in. So um, the, the goal here probably over the next few days is we're going to stand up a row of those beams and, and then you know gradually it'll get set up and uh, we hope here in about a month and a half, two months, We'll have it enclosed and then we'll put original barn wood back on the outside of it. We can walk over here a little closer if you want and look at some of the work that we're doing, get a better idea of how the inside's gonna look with the original beams. You can see we've got these columns laid down here where they're getting put back together and, and, and eventually the plan is to start raising them up here and we'll do that across the barn. You can see out along the cornfield there we've got all the interior pieces staged. So as we as we put some together we'll bring more in and, and keep the progress going that way. And so uh, I'd like to introduce you to Justin who's our barn expert and he's the one here that's helped us with the project and um, helped us with the design and the drawing of putting together what we want it to look like as we reconstruct it and uh, and then you're really leading and project manning the process to resurrect the barn. So I'd like to have you talk a little bit about uh, what you've seen in this project compared to other projects you've done and, and what your goal is and what's going to happen here over the next couple months. I'm Justin Strait. I'm uh the barn expert, I guess. <laughs> There's a lot to learn always on these projects and everyone's a little bit different, but uh, part of what makes this barn so unique is that it's actually a combination of different materials. And so uh, the, the, the vertical posts are all hand-hewn hardwoods that almost assuredly were uh, trees that grew on this property that they uh, cut down and used as the posts. Um, and then all of the horizontal members in this barn are actually softwood. And so usually it's one or the other, all softwood or all hardwood. Um, but because of this barn's size, it's 40 by 80, so it's 3,200 square feet, um, there's lots of pieces. And uh, a lot of the pieces weren't long enough to make the full distance. And so uh, one of the things that's different about this barn compared to others is that um, 
there's, there's a lot more splices, and, there, and that means there's a lot more joinery. Uh, that needs to be contended with. and It's amazing that it stood for as long as it did with uh, some of the foundation issues that it had before, and it's even more amazing that the material stayed in good shape uh, throughout uh, the, the foundation kind of deteriorating over time. So, um, yeah, that's, I'll take you around and show you some of the, the issues that we've had to deal with. So, this is a good example of the, where the top plates uh, splice, and this is Technically, it's a lap joint, but some of the times they refer to it as a scarf joint. It's fairly simple joinery, um, but this is where the post comes up through uh, and supports here. And so you can see on this tenon, this is one of the areas that we had to do epoxy repairs on. And part of the reason for that is that um, over time, the, they, they would, this would be wet when they actually cut the tree down and you know it wasn't like it was kiln dried and they wouldn't let it set and so the wood would dry over time and it just naturally splits and creates some of the a lot of the character um, but in the structural areas we did epoxy repairs and refilled that in so that when we go back to peg it uh, we know that we're going to have a strong structural connection with the original method of uh, doing the wood pegs in this area over here this is some of the changes that we're actually making to the frame uh, are going to incorporate some of the unused posts. And so because we added the big steel structure to accommodate the hydraulic doors for this, um, we were able to salvage some of the material that we weren't using. So these oak, um, these oak they were originally posts, are end up going to be uh, horizontal beams that will support the front edge of the deck that is going to be built in here. And so uh, it'll really make a nice showpiece out of the, the hand-hewn lumber and uh, on the face of that deck uh, really kind of show it all off nicely. But hopefully by next week we'll be starting to stand uh, up the timber frame. And so right now we've just got everything uh, assembled on the, the two bents down on the east end and we're putting our steel extensions on that's going to raise the height of the barn 18 inches. Um, and then that's what we anchor down to the concrete as well. And so uh, within the next week we'll have at least half the frame up and then um, I hope within two weeks we'll have the whole frame up and we can start to get onto the, the, uh, the roof framing. Um, and so after the timber frames erected uh, we're going to go ahead and power wash everything at that point because it'll all be up and we can clean it all one last time before we start to enclose it. Um, and then the next step will be putting on the, uh, the roof rafters and then the salvaged wood sheeting that'll go up on top and it'll, it'll look just like it did originally, uh, you know, uh, except for the, the steel that uh, was well, gonna take a while to wrap in wood. And so we are gonna wrap as much of the steel as possible in uh, some of the salvaged uh, material from the basement. Uh, we're gonna saw that down and make a veneer essentially out of it uh, to laminate onto the steel structure. Um, so after that is complete, uh, then we're gonna put up salvaged wood siding. Uh, a lot of it came from the barn, but a lot of it had already been picked over. And so uh, there'll be some coming from other projects uh, that'll come in and that'll go on the outside of the timber frame. Um, and then uh, to give it the modern insulation uh, and uh, the modern, the capacity of the modern installation like a house, uh, we're going to build a two, two by four wall on the outside of that uh, that'll allow for wiring and uh, some of the plumbing and uh, that'll be insulated and then sheeted and so it'll look like new construction on the outside. Uh, hopefully we can get to that point where we can get everything enclosed uh, before, before the snow starts flying but uh, there's a lot of wild cards out there yet so fingers crossed that we can get there. Yeah, well, thanks for all your efforts with this project. We, yeah. We've enjoyed working with you, and we're looking forward to seeing the end, end product and being able to use it. Yeah, likewise. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure to be involved with it, and uh, it's, it's one of a kind because usually when I take them down, I don't get to see them go back up, yeah. and especially in the same spot. And so the fact that this is all happy, it, it was here to start with, and it's going back here, it makes it just really special. So I appreciate it a lot, too. Yeah.